Hello, my name is Natalie Mills and my tech talk is going to be on skill retention. Um, the topic I chose was based on the last semester. We kind of had a topic of discussion regarding um, perceived st skill degradation in deployed physicians. And so I thought this was an interesting topic as most of the time it, the focus is primarily on skills that they need while they are deployed versus the skills that they have lost before um, they actually deploy. So this, the state-of-the-art technology that we'll be referring to is that military members of all specialties um, need to use high-tech simulators in order to practice their skills. Um, and then in order to not lose them during deployment. So this is kind of something that isn't necessarily explored, but definitely kind of leaves the reader to believe that this is something that they should actually pursue. Um, and then a little bit, um, some extra research that's thrown in there is that there's a lot of pre-deployment training, like in combat casualty care courses, talking about how to ready themselves for actually going out and going to be deployed, whereas there's not a lot of emphasis on how to, for a GI doctor, how he can keep his skills up for colonoscopies. Um, so both the retention of these skills and trauma skills are necessary for the physicians that are actually going to be taking care of the patients while deployed, and then they need those skills when they actually return. This can all be related back to modeling and simulation because the specialty skills perceived retention loss relates to um, an area where there's little research regarding implementing skills labs while deployed. So while there's a lot of training, a lot of emphasis that's focused on trauma and what to do if they have traumas, there's not a lot of emphasis on let's have a skills lab where someone can go um, do some hands-on training, whether if it's computer, have a sim lab, have something that's in place to keep those skills up. The study that kind of led me to this topic was from the last semester by Deering, Rush, uh, Leis, Brands, and Roth in 2010, and it did actually show a perceived degradation in skills. Um, and then the only thing that was recommended post-deployment was a refresher course that providers were required to go to upon return from deployment. There was no other recommendations from this article that that needed to be done in order for them to keep up their kind of specialty skills. So adding a modeling and simulation component to the deployed specialties would allow for an easier transition post-deployment. And I'll kind of get into a little bit of what the study kind of found here in a little bit. So the background of this topic is that military um, health system is unique in the sense that physicians deploy for six months, sometimes up to a year, um, and the, uh, most physicians will deploy sometime in their career. A lot of times the physicians are not always placed in the same job they perform when they're not deployed. So like I've mentioned before, a GI doctor could be working as a trauma surgeon just because if that's what's needed and that's what the the capacity of the deployment is that's what they're going to be serving as there's a lot of variation in the scope of practice so a lot of times um, what they've been practicing before might not necessarily be what they're practicing while deployed and like i've mentioned most consist of trauma and emergency surgery so how to react how to stabilize patients and how to get them to a higher echelon of care the current status that most surgeons while deployed perform less than half of their surgery cases, so keeping up with that clinical pace can be often very difficult for when surgeons actually go back to their primary job of where they were serving before. And sometimes the facilities either lack the correct instruments, they might have more up-to-date instruments in whatever hospital they're at, especially reservists who are getting pulled from civilian facilities. While we try to keep things standardized in military medicine, sometimes um, reservists are getting augmented for these deployments as well, so they might not be used to the, the these type of conditions. And sometimes even too, depending on where the deployment is, what you know, kind of role hospital it could be, they could have lack the facilities that are necessary to perform the, the tasks that need to be done. 
So the questions that kind of pop up in my mind when looking into this topic is, how long does it take operating surgeons to regain confidence and ability to re-enter their practice upon return from deployment? So from the time they get back from deployment, how long it does that take? And this could be a question posed for a, a potential future study. Um, and then is there something that can be done during the deployment that depends prevents the degradation from happening. So again, kind of proposing that almost like an opposite skills lab where it's a skills lab with simulation, computer-based training, you know, anything that kind of makes it unique to where they're still practicing these skills or potentially even doing, you know, humanitarian things where they do kind of like the comfort or the mercy. They go out and they're still doing the surgeries that they would have been doing before. Um, the study, like I mentioned before, was done in 2010, and so what this study they did, they went out to specialty consultants, to the Army Surgery Gen General, and then this was later pushed out to active duty staff who had deployment experience in August of 2007. So questions in the survey were specialty, length of deployment, perceived change in skills, skill use while deployed, and time to get back to baseline after deployment. So these are only only Army surgeons who were active duty during um, August of 2007. What they found is they um, sent the survey to 1,500 physicians and 673 were usable. So pretty, I mean, pretty decent size. They reported decrease in skills during deployment and it took an average of three to six months to get back to pre-deployment skill levels. So this is reported as perceived degradation in surgical and clinical skills while deployed. Since it was a survey, it's definitely subjective. Um, the longer the deployment, there was a direct correlation that the perception of skills being lost was greater. So if they were gone for longer, they weren't using those skills, then it took a little bit longer for them to get back to baseline. So how can this be prevented from losing their skills? And then what can we do to use this today? So as a result of this study, the Army Surgeon General has instituted a refresher training that's required post-deployment. So the refresher training is probably valuable. Um, I mean, it's almost like the same, it's like riding a bike, but at the same time, this is patients that the doctors are dealing with. You definitely want to do a little bit more than just kind of clicking through the PowerPoint. So I think there's a lot of value in modeling and simulation incorporated somehow as doctors back to baseline. Um, this tr refresher training could actually be incorporated while they're deployed, depending on what actually they had come up with and it was very vague it was just refresher training it wasn't anything really specific but certainly could be something that they have to do once a month you know every week depending on what kind of specialty skills they needed to re retain while they're deployed and then again you know having a local simulation center place to practice skills a lot of times I've seen um, you know pig labs where it's Corpsmen have gone to practice suturing, so just doing little things to kind of keep those skills up, um, whatever, you know, being very creative and how they're going to approach this, so that way the retention um, stays there and then their transition's a little bit easier. So to kind of conclude, based on this the study uh, by Deering et al. in 2010, um, there is a degradation in specialty skills not related to trauma care while deployed. So de definitely saw a direct correlation. Would certainly like to see if there's any other kind of surveys out there. Didn't see a lot of things to kind of mitigate this degradation in skills, but you know we can certainly get creative with what we can do to try to keep their skills up. Uh, future deployment should include simulation that's designed for physicians to practice their skills in order to retain once they return from deployment. Uh, side is the references from the two different studies, one pertaining to the degradation of skills and the other one kind of talking about how we prepare physicians for the modern battlefield. Um, you know, just an idea of how this can be incorporated into um, 
their their skill attention while they're deployed. Thank you.